I almost joined a frat. You want to hear that story? So as you guys know, I went to Arizona State. I didn't know anybody at the school. None of my friends were going there. But there was a kid a year above me who already had left to go to ASU. And I like reached out. I was like, hey, I'm coming here. He's like, oh shit, I'm in a frat here. You should come hang out. If you guys don't know what a frat is or what Greek life is, frats are for the boys, sororities are for the women. And basically, uh, you just hang out and um, that's it. It's just a group of guys you hang out with. And it's in different ways. There are some nerdy ones that do study groups. The ones that you might think of are the ones that kind of just party and drink. And uh, that's pretty much a frat. So I went to visit his frat. And the way frats function, they force the youngins to do all the work. It was based on seniority. So freshmen would do a lot of like the bitch work. But when the frat is first introducing themselves to you, they're much, much nicer than you'd expect. They invite you to parties. They give you free booze. They got hella girls. Because they're trying to flatter you. Wow you. So I went to this guy's frat. The frat was called, uh, it was called Kappa Alpha. K-A. Which, and I'm not exaggerating, was founded by Robert E. Lee. And I had never really considered joining a frat. But my friend Dan was like, hey man, all the guys like you, you should consider it. How about you come to the meeting? Uh, and it was like, this one, they, they reserved a space in the school, and it was basically every single frat, and they had a booth, and they would, like, pitch themselves to you. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go. And I went, I went with my roommate Josh, and it, it was so culty, it was so strange. It was very stressful, because you would go up to a booth, the guys would immediately judge you, and then based off how you looked, they would either turn to you and talk to you, or they'd completely ignore you. But me and my roommate Josh had made some friends at Kappa Alpha, and everyone there seemed pretty chill. And so we're like, let's just do that. Before I get into the frat, they gave me a taste of what it would be like to be a pledge. By just simply making me get some beer for them. A pledge is basically when you are accepted to be in the frat, but you're conditionally in, and you have to do all the bitch work, and if you don't do it, you're out. And so I remember they asked me to get beer for like one Sunday football game, some Sunday shit. And they gave me 20 bucks. But bear in mind, I'm 18 and the drinking age is 21. There's no way for me to legally get beer. I don't know anyone. I'm not allowed to ask anyone in the frat. I'm have to fend for myself. So me and my roommate Josh, this is true. We go to a Circle K, which is just a grocery store. At like the dead of night in downtown Phoenix. And we wait outside for somebody who's about to go in so we can ask them to buy us beer. And we're freaking out. Because we seem so sketch. Nobody's walking up to us. We're kind of just chilling. Nervously looking around. And finally some dude in a truck pulls up kind of near us. And we're like, yo, man, can you help us? And he's like, what's up? And we're like, uh, we need to get some beer. And he's like, what do you want? And we're like, uh, anything. We'll, we're good with just like a... Like a, like a 12 pack, is $20 good? And he kind of laughs, he's like, yeah, that's fine. So he takes our $20, goes inside, and we're waiting across the street at a closed bank because we don't want to seem too sus. The dude's like, we'll meet you when we get out because he was there with a buddy or something. We wait like five, 10 minutes. Finally, after what felt like a year, he walks out, gets into his car, and drives away. And we spent like 10 minutes thinking like, was that him? Was that him? Are we sure that was him? He fucking scammed us! We had absolutely nothing to our name! He took our 20 bucks and ran! He just fucked us! I mean, good on him. Don't buy beer for fucking dumbass college students, but fuck me, also don't scam them! My friend Dan covered for me, got the beer. I end up getting a bid. Which is basically them being like, we offer you uh, an invitation into our frat to be a pledge. And I'm like... Sure, I had had some fun times at the party, but I also didn't really like just the nature of a frat. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, I don't really want to be a pawn. I don't want to just be another cog in the system. 
If I was going to be in a frat, I want to make my own frat. I want to be Mogul Moves frat. I want to do my own thing. I want to rewrite the book, not just live another chapter. So I end up turning down the bid. Never joined a frat. And it kind of worked out because I was still good friends with everyone. So they would invite me to their party still. So I kind of got the best of both worlds. Until I got kicked out of their party and I was never invited again, but that's a different story. Alright, so here's what happened. I was still invited to their parties. And if you don't know anything about frats, frats have these things called roses and sweethearts. All it is is basically just girls in sororities who go to all their parties. And oftentimes probably fucked a couple of the dudes. There's only one rose, they're the very special one, and there's like a few sweethearts. And bear in mind, I'm a freshman. People in frats can be as old as seniors, 22, and I'm 18. Now, at the time, I kind of knew the idea of roses and all that, but I didn't know exactly who the rose was for Cap Alpha or any of that shit. I was just a freshman dude, hanging out, trying to have fun, drink beers, yada yada. And so I'm in a circle at a Cap Alpha party one time, and I'm talking to this girl in the circle, and this guy. And I'm joking around with this girl, and I'm very lighthearted. I'm not afraid to really make any joke. I just try to make people laugh. I just try to have a fun time. So I'm talking to this girl, and I think we're vibing. And at one point, she says to me, in a somewhat teasing but also mean way, she's like, suck a dick. And I'm like, yeah? And I say this. On God, I go, yeah, I'll suck a dick. I'll suck a whole barrel of dicks. Which I don't know why. I was drunk. I thought it was good. I thought I got her. I thought I got her good. She walks away. The conversation ends. And I think nothing of it. Five minutes later... Big ass dude walks up to me. Guy in Cap Alpha. I didn't really know him. Kind of knew him by name. It's like Scott or something. He's like, yo, you gotta go. I'm like, what? He's like, you gotta get out of here. And I'm like, what? why? And he's like, you just gotta go. You've been harassing girls. And then my memory jogs and I'm like, no. The suck a dick girl? Since she was the Rose, it was her right to kick me out. But I'm like embarrassed and I don't know why and I feel like there's a misunderstanding. So I message a few guys and I have them come out and I'm like, literally they have a gate to their apartment complex and I have them come out. And I'm like, what's up? And they're like, it's the girl, man. It's the girl. You said you told her to go suck a barrel of dicks. I was like, no, no, I never told her to suck any dicks, not a single dick. I said, I wanted to suck dicks. And so they homie me and let me back in. And apparently one of the guys goes to talk to her. Let him know I might be back in. So I'm chilling. Still kind of heated, but just trying to relax. Drinking a beer, whatever. Not Trying to act as if it doesn't bother me, even though it does. And then, randomly, about 45 minutes later, I run into her. And I'm like, I'm like nervous she's going to kick me out again or have Scott come beat my ass. And I'm like, hey. She's like, hey. So they let you back in. I was like, yeah. She's like, cool. I was like, yeah. What are you drinking? And, you know, I could have just been honest. And if I was honest, you know what? I might still be invited to some Cap Alpha frat parties. But I'm a bit of an asshole. So I look at her and I go, oh. Me? Just drinking a barrel of dicks. Big old barrel of dicks. And before I can even lull W at my own joke, there's Scott looming over her shoulder. And like a movie, I'm thrown out. And I am no longer invited to the frat parties. Was it worth it? No! There's no one even there to laugh at my joke! So I'm in college, and I'm not in a frat, but I feel like I'm wasting my time in college. Yeah, I'm working. Yeah, I'm getting my degree. But honestly, the degree's not that hard. And the work, also not really a career. So I wanted to pursue something else. And as you guys can probably guess from my stream, what I wanted to do outside of work and outside of class, it was, of course, choir. Yep. That was what I auditioned for. That was the school club I thought I should be a part of this. The acapella clubs. And it turns out it was a thriving group. 
at this point, I had already bounced around a few groups. I tried the sailing club. Turns out there's not that much sea in Arizona. I tried robotics. Didn't even really get two feet in the door before I thought I wasn't smart enough. And I was like, acapella. I remember loving Honor Squire. I made a lot of great friends in Honor Squire. Had some killer solos. Can you imagine me in an acapella club? There were three acapella clubs of note. There was Priority Mail. There was the Tempe Tations, because the school is in Tempe, Arizona. And then there was the uh, ASU Pitchforks. Priority Mail was the only all-male acapella group, and they were considered the best on campus. So, I go, and I audition. And they make you do, like, a written application, and then they make you do one song. So I show up. And at the time, I was really into Ewan McGregor, and specifically the movie Moulin Rouge. And in the movie Moulin Rouge, they do a special rendition of Elton John's Your Song. I was really into that. So I had that song prepared, I had my written application, I show up. It's just me in front of the cast of Priority Mail. And I sing my heart out, and I fucking crush it. And I go home, and the next day I get a text. I'm invited for callbacks. What's the song? It's the one that goes like, uh, if I was a self I don't know the words anymore. And callbacks is 10 guys, of which only four are going to be added. And the first part of the callbacks was like group singing. And I'm really good at group singing. So I was kind of killing it. I was kind of killing it. And then they invite you in for another solo interview. And in the solo interview, I show up, and then they ask me to sing. And I start my song, your song. And they go, stop. And I'm like, what's up? And they're like, well, we heard you sing that in the first rehearsal, and we'd like a song that shows off more of your range. They're like, do you have a song that shows off your range? And they were asking a question which felt like if I didn't answer, I'd be not invited into the club. So I was like... Yeah! Knowing the only song that came to my head was, uh, was Titanium by Sia. Because I had sang it in high school one time, uh, maybe three years earlier. And they were like, great, great. Let's do that song. And bear in mind, this is a cappella. You do not get background tracking. So I'm like trying to find the note, and all I can remember is the chorus. I'm bulletproof. That's it. Even if you don't start on the right note, as long as the notes still have the same separation, it still makes sense. That's what key changes are. But my problem was, I couldn't remember the beginning to the song. So they were giving me the beginning note to the song. You shut it out, but I can't hear a word you say. And in my mind, I was like, that's low. I'll just pop that an octave up. You shut it out, but I can't. And I start an octave higher than I'm supposed to be. A word you say. Not only that. But all of the words had in an instant escaped my mind. What I was singing to them probably sounded like this. Shut it out, but I can't flee, so nerd you flay. I looked around, everybody looked kind of nervous and awkward. So I said, fuck it, and I jumped to the chorus in the same octave. And it goes high! I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. Far away, far away. I can't even get through one chorus. And they're like, that's good. They don't say stop. They don't say another song. They say, that's good. That's all for today. And I walk out of there praying my charisma, my ability in Smash, and my group sing was enough. And it turns out, it was not enough. I was not invited to join priority mail. So here I am. Refused to join a frat, failed to join an acapella club, feeling like I'm wasting my time in college. When I find out that ASU also has 
a thriving comedy scene. 30, 40 plus years of experience in nationwide known groups, honestly. Known as Bear in Mind Improv in Far Side Sketch Comedy. And I'm like, shit, man. If I want to be a talk show host, comedy's not too far off. I should try one of these out. The audition goes fine. I thought I had a decent chance of making it in. And I'm basically just waiting for an email. Finally, I get one. And the email reads as follows. Thank you for auditioning for ASU Comedy. At the moment, we are not currently interested in inviting you to join either of our clubs. Please consider auditioning next semester. And I was, at that point, pretty wide people sad. Failure after failure. But I remember there was one guy at the auditions who was talking about the stand-up club. And his name, and I'm not making this up, was Forbes. Like the magazine. And so I go to see Forbes, and I'm like, yo, hey, uh, are you guys interested in adding any members for the stand-up club? And he looks at me, and he chuckles, and he goes, yeah, man, there's no, uh, there's no audition for that. Like, anyone can do it. I mean, you can come if you want. He clued me in on a secret project. He said, um, hey, I'm actually starting my own comedy club that's going to be both improv and sketch comedy and stand-up all in one if you want to join. I was like, I'm down. He's like, show up here on Friday. So it's me and one other kid who's younger who show up, me and Colton. And then it's like four or five seniors. A ragtag bunch of people. And the lore goes, Forbes had auditioned to get into the comedy club's Bear in Mind Improv and Far Side Sketch Comedy multiple times. And he had failed to get in every time. Most people would move on, but Forbes wasn't the type of guy to take no for an answer. So he decided... Instead of just throwing in the towel, he would make his own comedy group. And it would be bigger and better than all the other comedy groups. And then finally, the other comedy groups would stop talking shit. Because I'm funny, man. I'm funny. So he ended up poaching a couple people who were already in the current comedy groups. And some people who were in the same position as him, aka me, who weren't invited to those other comedy groups. And Tempe Late Night was born. And let me tell you, at the start, it was embarrassing. It would be like us six doing shows on Friday night under the now deceased Taco Bell in the Arizona State Memorial Union in front of, and I'm not exaggerating, one person. And that guy was the production. Because Forbes' dream was not only that he would be the biggest comedy on campus, he would go on the internet and be one of the biggest sketch comedy shows on YouTubes. Which is why you've probably seen me on YouTube. Forbes and most of the guys are seniors. The first semester of Tempe Late Night goes about as expected. Everything's kind of shoddy. The recording's not great. Nobody's really taking the responsibilities of uploading. The shows have no crowds. They're not necessarily that funny. But... You fail, and try again. Second semester, we're forcing everybody to invite our friends. Which I think is good. If you're going to put a product out there, and you're not proud enough to show it to your friends, you should not expect people to watch it. AK, if you're trying to become a Twitch streamer, but you're too pussy to post it on your main Twitter account, then why are you streaming? Why do you expect us to watch it? So we start asking friends. A forced policy. To ask friends. Kyle joins. B-Day 38 in chat. And the crowd grows. And we start to have 15, 20 people. We start actually uploading to YouTube. And when auditions happen for comedy. It's no longer just bear in mind or farce sketch comedy. It's now also Tempe Late Night. And some funny people who don't want to be pigeonholed into one or the other. Are like, yeah I'll do that. And we get some grade-A talent. The Chandlers of the world start joining. And what started as one dude's revenge story in a ragtag group of what really is failures grew into, and I'm not exaggerating, the largest 
comedy club in terms of people who'd show up and watch at Arizona State University. My last semester there, the crowds were close to the hundreds every Friday night. It was fucking filthy, man. And what was literally nothing became something. It's also what gave me the legs to feel confident enough to stream. There's a big difference between bombing on stage, doing stand-up comedy, and feeling, like literally feeling the people's silence when you expect laughter, and then like streaming on Twitch, and then like you drop a joke and no one really little W's. Cause you guys leave. And I don't know when you leave, which is cool. Any one of you could leave right now, I wouldn't know who it is or why you left. If somebody walks out of a stand-up show, that hurts! Anyway, that's to say failure after failure. Failure in the sailing club, acapella club, and joining the original comedy clubs. Still ended up with some fruits. Moral of the story, it, simply put, is people will say no Meggies to you, but you just have to respond and say yes, smiley face. Your voice.